There it is. Off of here I come. Now that is love letter, right? I have that wrong gasoline that's match. It's a goodbye different letter. letter. <laughs> goodbye letter. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah. Blue. <laughs> Thanks, man. Now that's got that cool piano. Actually, that is a tune that I wanted to play. I just had to hurry up and get my song titles uh, correctly. But uh, man, cool stuff. I was planning on playing that with the horns and all that. Tell us about those guys uh, on the goodbye letter. The Texas horns. Yeah. Well, good, the goodbye goodbye letter uh, just was. I wanted to have a song on the album that reflected the inspiration I took from old, old Chicago blues. You know, the type like uh, Magic Sam, uh, Magic Slam, Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, uh, early years of Jimmy Johnson and. Uh, all that that kind of Chicago uh, stuff, and I wanted to have at least one song on the album that was straight straight uh, Chicago blues. So, came up with that song. Uh, we did not have horns on that tune, but we had uh, the genius of of Gene Peele on the piano, and you could hear it from from the first ten seconds. Jim is already just like jamming, you know. So it's a very cool slow blues. Yeah, the way you make me feel. So it's got the hard driving, you know, the horn driving love song too. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, all that cool stuff. Now, my friend, you're from Costa Rica. Travel the world. You're a blues man. Blues guys are all over the place, man. You guys, they love you. Um, growing <laughs> up, you know, you talk about the influence, but uh, you know, the music down in uh, down in that part, you know, and, the, and then you get to Chicago, man. What what a life experience with uh, with the notes and everything, hey. Yeah, it's um well you know Tom it's been a it's been a crazy crazy ride so far. Um, I'm very very grateful for for being able to travel the world and seeing new places, new countries, new people, uh, new fans, just by you know playing my guitar and playing the blues. It's it's really uh, it's really an honor. And uh, yeah, I've, I've I've so far been able to uh, tour Europe a couple times. I've played shows for the past couple of years. I've played there off on a, on a very regular basis every year and uh, played shows in Spain, played shows in Belgium, the Netherlands, the Basque country, uh, and also United Kingdom, England. Uh, so they, they really, really love and support and respect the blues as if it was theirs, even though it's, we know it's not, it was not born there. They really respect the genre a lot. And and they uh, they support the genre a lot. So there are many blues festivals all over Europe. There's a lot of blues foundations and blues societies, and they treat the artists like like rock stars. Even though we're blues musicians, they really treat us like like rock stars in Europe. So it's always nice to go back. Well, yeah, the International Blues Foundation. They're all flying. Oh, I know Len from A B I K. Promotions, I get the jams from him. He came all the way from Holland. He was on my show too. Uh, wow. He came all the way. Yeah, he was asking me if I was going to be able to get there. And let's hope next year. I know Live 365 had a live broadcast uh, from the show. You know, I can do that, and that'd be a great thing to do. But, but yeah, Europe. It's it's bands in Milwaukee that I know. Altered Five Blues Band, Tweed Funk. Yeah, they've been in Europe right away. You know, and it, it just. The thing I was thinking about is the crowds. Are they? Because I'm a big fan of the Who, where the Who name comes from. They seem much more mm-hmm. pumped up. They're waving flags, <laughs> at least on the bigger stage. Is it? Is it like that when you guys are rocking? <laughs> it, it really is different. I, um, there are certain clubs in America that I've played that have a certain mystique or a certain energy. That it's unlike anything else. Some clubs have that in America. Some blues clubs, um, but us blues artists, we also tour a lot through regular bars, the bar scene and the bar circuit. And when you play a regular bar, and I'm not gonna say any names, just a regular bar, sometimes yeah. you encounter just like rowdy, rowdy people not really paying attention to what's going on on stage, and that's that's normal. I mean, we we are used to that every now and then. 
But the the difference with Europe is when you tour Europe, every single place you play, it doesn't matter if it's a small club, a small underground bar, a big theater, it doesn't matter what type of venue it is in Europe, everybody's paying attention to what's going on on stage. And when they want to party, they party with the band. They party with the music that they are listening yes. that's coming from the stage, you know? That that That's probably the key because when I notice the mics kind of go over here, well, I'm a big fan of the Hooligans, I'll cheer, go over this, the European crowds are right on <laughs> They're all fired up, you know. They're on a tune. Not that yeah. we're not, because I'm at the shows and walk, you know, with the Who. I've been to the many, like twenty ish times, you know. But it's wow. different. But it's different. I've seen them do that. But again, it's a video. I see, you know. I'm just a fan. But I'm, I always love to just talk about the different, you know, because different influences of music. Now, tell me about the culture. Now, obviously, Costa Rica. It's a different kind of jive down there. My brother lives in a different part of the world than down <laughs> in South America. You know, that, that brings yeah. a whole different flavor to the music than growing up. You know, different parts of the world. I guess. You know. Yeah, it's it really is, Tom. It's a, it's a different it's a different animal. It's a different beast. You know, um, growing up down there. I had no blues music to go see live anywhere. There were no other blues bands that I could go uh-huh. see and learn from. Uh, there was no blues. There were no blues societies around that could support me as a blues musician. So I have to say that I, I owe everything I am today to my to my dad basically because he was the one when I picked up a guitar as as a as a kid, you know, twelve, eleven years old. My dad was the one who told me, well, if you're really serious about playing guitar. You have to listen to a type of music that's called the blues. And even before you pick up that guitar, you have to listen to a bunch of records. So he gave me a bunch of CDs by B.B. King and John Lee Hooker and Lightning Hopkins. And uh, and this is a funny story I tell at my shows. Um, I tell the audience this, and everybody makes fun of me, but that's fine because I live through it, and it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I I never had a I never had a had a uh, a girlfriend while. Wow while being on high school because I was never the popular kid. I was the weird kid trying to play a type of music that was so weird, so old, and so uh, so strange for Costa Ricans, you know, for Latin people. So I was never the, the popular kid, but nowadays I look back to it, and um, and it's just, it was worth it, you know. It was worth every every minute of it. You were born for the blues. I mean... <laughs> So many of you guys are just in your heart and your soul, and, uh, you know, that's really neat, you know, growing up to hear that. And, uh, you know, those records had to be golden. I'm in my older 50s, you know. When I was 45, we'd stack them up back in the day, my parents, and I'd go yeah. get a new store and get a 45. That It's all I had, you know, in the 70s. But same yeah, experience yeah. down by you. You get a record from the new B.B. King. Oh, my gosh. You're gonna wear that needle out because <laughs> it was on a needle, I imagine, or I don't know. Not, <laughs> I date not, myself. Not, my, not in my case. Not in my case. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was born in 1988, so I didn't have. Uh, I, I was not playing records with a needle back back in the early 90s. But uh, you know, yeah, funny of course thing is, I do have a, an old school record player now, and I do play yeah. BB King on a vinyl <laughs> and through a needle now. <laughs> No, as I'm thinking, I'm like, no, but that's the magic of the CD. Because actually, I did. I used all my albums, and I just let them sit for 20 years because I bought them all again on CD. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. You, let the, yeah, the turntable I'm looking at it right now. She the, the duel that I had is sitting there, and uh, you're right. But it, it just was a different time, and then I went to the other format where I can kind of beat them up a little bit. I should I stay in my car? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, that that's hilarious, man! I'll tell you what. <laughs> hey, let, you got that Robert Johnson tune. I'm hoping I, this is the one or that I have lined up for you. But traveling Riverside Blues. I'm gonna hit the next one that I have mis ma- mislabeled, I think. But anyways, that's a cool tune. Tell us a little bit about that Brock background on that one. You know, um, Robert Johnson is is I think. It's got to be in my top two or three uh, favorite blues musicians of all times, and I wanted I wanted this record to be mostly original music that I've written, uh, but I wanted to include two covers. 
I did not know which covers th- these songs were going to be, uh, but I knew that I wanted a Robert Johnson song, and I knew that I wanted a Ray Charles song on my on my record. Uh, at the end, the Ray Charles song, we recorded it, but it didn't it didn't make it to the final cut of the album. That's unreleased, and we'll probably release it some other time. Uh, but I was able to include an old T-Bone Walker song, which is I Miss You, Baby. And I was able to include a Robert Johnson song, which is Traveling River Sidewalks. And I, it's not because it's my song, but I, I've never heard a Robert Johnson song that sounds so different to all the Robert Johnson covers that are out there. Uh, there I mean, people from, uh, I don't know, Cream to Led Zeppelin, they all recorded uh, uh, Robert Johnson songs. And I think this take on Traveling Riverside Blues is kind of different. And some people actually are telling me, hey, Jose, we are listening to that song, and it kind of sounds like reggae at some point. So that's interesting. And I think that just came across naturally since I'm from the Caribbean, you know, a Caribbean country. <laughs> yeah, that, hey, man, that sounds great. Actually, it's still in the processor. I have to upload these to a server in New York, that tune. I'm looking for it, and there it is. It's still in the processor. I don't have that uh-huh. one available, I, but it, I just wanted to hit on that because that's obviously one of the great influences for you, and that is all available on the CD, everybody. May 29th, a week from tonight. Everybody's got a week from in the morning, <laughs> a week from from right now. Yeah. Here I come. <laughs> Pick it up. It's going to be Amazon, you know, available on uh, iTunes and everything. When I play them on my uh, Live 365, there'll be a buy link when you go to the actual player and pick up the tunes and do all that, you know. Um, And, uh, Duff, I'll tell you what. Let's get to how about As You Can See. Let me play that one for everybody, and we'll be right right back. If anybody's got a moment, we are here, 516-387. One three two eight. Thanks, everybody. We'll be right back with Jose. Peace. I've been thinking about 